Hello, hello. Good morning, good evening, uh, everyone. We'll just give it a couple of more minutes uh, and see if more people are joining. I see lots of new faces. Welcome, everyone. I'm juggling between two monitors, so sometimes you might feel like I'm looking somewhere else, but it's just uh, another monitor, and they're two very far apart, so. Okay. Some reason it's not admitting people. So just give it a second. Okay, all right. So let's get started. Uh, uh, and uh, I, I might uh, just pause for a second if I see many people joining and I'll let them in all together. So we will, uh, so this is a very um, admit, okay. Um, so this is a, a very basic uh, walkthrough of the platform. And we will answer after that, any questions that you have uh, related to how to use the platform, where you are facing challenges and how we can, uh, so or if we can show you examples on solving those challenges uh, while we are in this webinar. So the first half, half an hour, I'll quickly go through the platform. And I know there are many people who are just getting used to the platform. So it will be nice to kind of look at uh, what the platform can currently do. Uh, and we can also in the last five, 10 minutes, if we have time, talk about what are uh, some of the upcoming things uh, that will address some of the challenges that you might have with the platform and uh, what could increase the productivity as well. So let's get started. I'll start sharing my screen. Okay, I believe you guys can see my screen. Yeah, we can see. Okay, All right, let me just uh, move this. So it will not let me go. Second, I need to share again. Okay, all right, sounds good. Uh, let me just uh, zoom in a little bit so it's uh, better. There we go. All right, so we can look at many keywords, right? So I'm going to pick something uh, which is a little more complicated, a little more complicated, and uh, there might not be tons of good data out there related to it. So how do you go about uh, creating content for it? Uh, how do you go about creating outline for it? Uh, and what sort of information you can use on the platform to create something uh, uh, really fast. So, okay, we'll look at ultrasonic bar control and instead of just uh, looking here, I'll create a new document. And what most people miss out over here on this uh, new SEO document is uh, the spine related keyword uh, link. And you can enter a keyword to get some search volume associated with that uh, particular keyword. And so it can help you generate some ideas. Uh, it can uh, help you understand if there is any uh, keyword volume associated with it, what sort of competition it has uh, and everything around it. So you can then pick the idea and create uh, a document around. So just a second, since we're using Zoom, it's taking up some memory. Okay. Some reason it's taking up all the memory of my uh, browser. It's okay. So let's go ahead and create an SEO document. Okay. So this brings you to AI Wizard, uh, and this AI Wizard knows some of the most important words that you need to use in your title. So the point is to like you can you can combine these words and come up with a creative title, or you can just click here and it will. Got it, Michelle. So we'll definitely get it looked at. 
uh, it could probably be uh, temporary with the API, uh, with some uh, with the API that we are using. So I'll definitely get it looked at. Okay. Uh, okay. So it generated some ideas, right? So and you can see that dog was not part of your keyword, but it, it understood what the intent was behind this and uh, gave you this particular keyword. So you can pick a title. Okay. Uh, you so let's change that to dog bark control okay and click next now you can use that title to come up with a meta description okay and here as well you will see that uh, we're talking about bark uh, control ultrasonic barking and dog right so oh look at that okay uh, you can also double click on it and adjust it uh, if you wanted to now let's click next Okay, so what it's suggesting here is that uh, an average uh, 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 average amount of sections used in uh, the SERP is 21, and the highest amount is using 90. So 90 is a lot, right? Uh, and I, I can get a little idea that people might have different products that they're selling. So it's more like a catalog. Uh, so it could have many sections, right? People are like writing H2 tags about all the product pages and stuff like that. So the point here is let's go ahead and create an outline and to generate this outline, we use related keywords data and uh, H2s and H3 tags from existing SERP data and come up with concepts and influence that to come up with uh, uh, questions uh, or outline ideas. So these are only ideas, but it's up to you which ones you want to uh, take and use and you can discard the other ones. So let's say how to use ultrasonic barking uh, dental device. I don't know what that is, um, but maybe we can add that and we can understand uh, uh, how to uh, you know fit that in. Okay, what is the dog barking? It's very uh, preliminary and a very broad question, but uh, you can still answer it and you can answer probably in a, uh, in a different way and say that what can lead to dog barking, right? You. And all right, so uh, why invest in an ultrasonic? So, okay, what are some best product? What is an ultrasonic bar control? Uh, okay, so I see that there's some pros and cons. So if we were doing a product comparison, I would keep it in mind uh, to uh, add the product comparison uh, and pros and cons for each of the products uh, that I'm mentioning in this particular post. And if you are just mentioning your own post, uh, that's okay to leave out product uh, products, uh, pros and cons, uh, but talk more about uh, benefits uh, of the product. Okay. Okay, so I see some ideas over here, some great ideas, some repetitive. Uh, what are the benefits of uh, a dog barking ultrasonic? Uh, okay, that does not make sense, but it's okay. Uh, so, all right. So I think this is good to start with, and then we can... Uh, once we are in the concept builder, we can add more details to this using CERT data. So let's go ahead and create an outline. So this is the outline. Now I need to add more, right? Like I need to create a proper structure uh, or uh, how I want to uh, adjust this uh, and create my particular outline. So you can drag and drop, let's minimize this. Uh, and you can double click here, you can edit it. What we will do is we will start adding more details to it. So I'm going to open Concept Builder, and this is going to open the same but same screen here, a bigger view. But now you can navigate through other sections and collect ideas and add them directly into uh, the Concept Builder. So okay, uh, let's go ahead and see some uh, information. Okay, I don't really like anything here. Let's go next. Okay, so now you start seeing uh, different kinds of bar control. So indoor, elite, outdoor, right? Uh, so let's say indoor and outdoor are the two types of uh, uh, ultrasonic uh, bar control device. Okay, so I'm going to open this and I need to club this over here, right? So indoor, outdoor. And then you can drag it in here and start building your outline. Okay, don't see many things here. But once you start cruising through a few of these, you will start understanding what people are really looking for. 
uh, and how you should be guiding your outline uh, to come up with a proper structure. Now, this significantly changes with the next release. Uh, in next release, uh, most of these parts are automatically done for you. Uh, but until then, uh, you can use this method to come up with an outline and then rewrite it if you wanted to. You can adjust it uh, by double clicking on it and building out that really strong outline uh, that, it at least, uh, that at least has nine sections uh, based upon the recommendation, okay? Uh, then you can also go to highest frequency word data and maybe check, all right, so I wanna talk about everything related to PetSafe. Let's see what people have written. Okay, PetSafe, uh, all right. So you can see uh, certain things. So PetSafe is probably a brand uh, that people have talked about. And you can use, uh, so, so you can understand like why this is uh, important. Like uh, if you are an e-commerce company or you are an affiliate or you have an affiliate blog, um, you can talk about this particular products because people are most likely searching for it. Uh, 18 out of the 20 pages have mentioned this. So there is some sort of relevancy to it uh, and it would make sense to use them, right? So people are also talking about battery, uh, battery operated, right? Uh, they're talking about uh, collars and stuff like that. So you can understand what this really means uh, and how you can come up with an outline that has all of these details. So, okay, train, uh, just gonna clear all and uh, let's see control. Okay, so you see indoor, outdoor control, choosing the right bark control, right? Like how do you choose the right bark control? So uh, I can also add that, but like this is, uh, this is something that I would probably include here. So you can understand how to go about building an outline uh, and then making sure that you also cover questions. So we have questions from content, but what we recommend using is paw boxes or Google questions, right? Does the NT bark uh, barking device really work? Like, so this is something that I really want to talk about. What is ultrasonic bark control really, how, uh, does, does it really work, right? Like that's the first question people would have, like there is, this might be all a hype or uh, however it is, right? Like, so this could also be a very, uh, very uh, good question. So you can add all of these questions and group them uh, in whatever, whatever H2s they belong, or you can also at the end create uh, an FAQ about uh, this particular topic or even your product, right? So you can say FAQ, open this up and drag all of these questions in here. And then later uh, build them up, right? So, okay, uh, let me minimize this. So you can understand there's, there's many, many uh, questions and uh, topics that you can include to come up with your outline. Uh, and this is a uh, keyword question. So these are directly uh, what people are looking for in Google, like typing it in and it has some sort of search volume to it. So this also makes sense super, uh, you know, to include this, uh, to try and either rank for that feature snippet, that uh, question or this particular query as well. Okay. All right. So I, we just went through quickly on how you would go about creating your outline. Uh, and then now let's go ahead and close this out and I will go back to sections. Okay, so now we have sort of created a structure uh, for, our, for, for this uh, blog post that we wanna write about. Now, what you would do now is that, all right, so let's uh, go ahead and start creating your content. So we can say, what is dog barking? Uh, I don't really wanna talk about this. This is a very generic question, but let's say we wanna answer this question. I wouldn't use SERP data for this, it's very generic. So uh, we can just uh, click answer. There we go. Now we can go ahead and click enter, minimize this. We're done with this. How to use ultrasonic bar deterrent. Uh, like, so this might not fit right into our outline, but let's go ahead and click generate concepts. I have no idea what this is, uh, what this device does and how to use it, right? So proper fit of a bar control is part of a calm environment. 12 hours is the limit for how long it should be used on your uh, dog's neck, right? So that's what it's suggesting for this different device, right? So now if you wanna start writing about this, you can uh, copy this in and then start building out this paragraph. Okay, uh, all right. So what you will notice sometimes that there's a little bit of disconnect between the first and the second paragraph. Uh, this, uh, is, this is fixed in the next version where you'll have ability to select multiple concepts merge them together and create a very well-defined 
uh, a, a paragraph from get go, it will also understand that now it needs to transition into a new paragraph. So it will write accordingly. Uh, so all these features are coming in the next release, uh, but this uh, at, at, as where the product currently stands, you might need to uh, change just a little bit of the sentence to make it uh, uh, fix them together. Next release is on 23rd, uh, ES, uh, 12 a.m. EST. Okay. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, keep going, right? Uh, let's go ahead and minimize this. Uh, and you can similarly start, uh, okay, so you can similarly start building out your entire content piece uh, without like uh, at least not doing any, uh, uh, any work in the beginning uh, to adjust the paragraph, maybe create the first, uh, first draft first and then start adjusting and making sure uh, that everything everything uh, transitions properly. So the point is to get to that first draft very fast using factual information uh, that later you can adjust and make it a publish ready blog. Uh, okay, so uh, let's start looking into some more complex things uh, as well, right? So we're talking about this uh, PetSmart uh, product as well. So let's go ahead and uh, add one more outline here. Indoor. our control device. Okay, I will go now to sections and let's go ahead and find, it's a dog control, uh, bar, bark control pro. This is probably uh, a product that is being sold, sold somewhere. So let me go ahead and add that. Uh, and this could totally be your product. Uh, it doesn't really matter, or it could be a product from Amazon uh, and it doesn't even have to be here. So I'm gonna show you how you can still come up with content uh, for this products uh, without uh, having much research at hand at all. So, okay, let's go ahead and group this in here and generate concepts for it. It will tell you the Bark Control Pro for uh, by Good Life. So it's giving you all the information about this particular product, right? Now, let's say that, oh, this is gonna build out a particular paragraph, uh, but I want more structured information. Uh, I want maybe uh, grab, uh, let's say features out of it. I wanna grab pros out of it. I wanna grab cons out of it. Right, like, uh, okay. Guys, can you still hear me? Hear me? Hello? Just some weird stuff going on. Uh, can everybody hear me? I'm yes. Yeah, yes. we can. Yes, perfect, perfect. Sounds good. Um, okay, so let's say uh, I wanted to like, you know, create more structured information uh, and I want to write first features, then I want to write some pros about it, and maybe then I want to even write some uh, some of my reviews around it, right? How do you go about doing that? Uh, so you can come up here and select feature type uh, concepts that you want to collect out of it, and it will now focus uh, or really try hard to come up with those features from uh, the bar control. So you can see uh, 10 years of success in market, uh, okay? It's trained and tested uh, the product. Okay, so you can see that this is really good information. It is uh, features and it is not just like copied and pasted out of SERP data. It is doing the magic. It's coming up with uh, this precise points that you can include as features for this particular product or anything. So now you can come here and say, all right, I wanna talk about this particular product and I'm going to talk about bar control uh, and you can start copying them as your list. So, and then just convert that into a list. And this is, this are your probably features, right? Okay, uh, now let's say you have done that and uh, now you wanna write about some benefits of this product. Benefits, all right. You can go down and let me go ahead and delete this as well. And I would say, I want to pick out all the benefit types of features for this particular product. So it can understand the intent behind any text and uh, it can automatically uh, start the collecting concepts around that. There we go. It cannot get any better. So you're using the same information, but you are collecting different sentiments, different aspects 
of information that the user will find uh, useful. You have this structured as features and benefits. It's much more readable. It's much more digestible by the users and go through them quickly and decide whether to buy this product or not, right? And this is why many people who are using concepts uh, to publish content online are seeing improvement in ranking because it's extremely readable. And also it consists of the key vitals from SERP, right? So uh, when we collect these concepts, uh, we influence the AI to help us extract specific concepts uh, or uh, forcefully extracts concepts which have certain keywords in it uh, that are relevant uh, to this particular uh, blog post or this particular page ranking in Google. So what it really tries hard is to not only give you everything related to it, but also give you or emphasize things which are relevant to your search engine. Uh, this is significantly different than just coming up with concepts or, or coming up with some context from a few sentences and putting them together and creating uh, points around it. This is much more digestible and written in form of a discussion point. So uh, what is a discussion point, right? Like you start with one and you end at five and there is a path to it. It will really try to nail down that path as well and make sure uh, that you can talk about them in a very systematic manner. Can we extract something from Google Scholar or a specific URL? Yes, uh, I will get to it. Uh, you can definitely do that. And there are some really powerful utilities uh, even in the next feature that enhances that as well. So, okay. So now let's say you've done this, right? Uh, and uh, you want to uh, maybe talk about uh, the disadvantages of it uh, or, uh, some problems with it, right? You can use this. Now, all, if the paragraph is written very in a positive note and everything is positive, 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 then you might get some, uh, some, uh, some data that is not really a disadvantage, uh, but you can try. What I really do like, so you can let's go ahead and generate it and we'll see. Okay, yeah, look at that. Only works for small dogs. So these are some disadvantages, right? So not disadvantages, but you would say uh, steps that the users need to make, uh, like, you know, when you're purchasing, make sure that you use all of these, like there's no return policy, no warranty, right? Like, come on, like this is amazing information right from uh, using the same, uh, same research content. Could you give us an overview uh, from the text release uh, for, from the next release, like new functionalities, et cetera. We'll cover that in the last five, 10 minutes. Uh, sure. Uh, okay. So you understand now that this is much very, very, very powerful. Now, what we will do is let's say this is some random product that you collected out of Amazon, right? Uh, or let's say a drop shippers website uh, or anywhere on, uh, on the web, right? So what you would do uh, is probably find that product on uh, Amazon. Okay, so there's many, many, many uh, bar control. Okay, so I, I see a particular product right here, right? Like I have no idea what this product does and how is it gonna be useful? You can copy the content directly from here. You can come here and you can paste that content in here. That's one way of grabbing the content from uh, a specific source. Uh, many people do this when uh, they have a bunch of text, like it's, it's a large amount of text uh, and you want to just, you know, like uh, uh, grab a certain section out of it uh, for better readability or better, uh, you know, better under, uh, uh, guiding the AI in a better sense uh, to come up with more precise concepts. Uh, in that case, you can paste it here or you don't even have to worry about it. Just copy the entire thing, paste it in here. And if it is too long, uh, what you can do is go to research and add the URL of the source you want us to collect or read concepts from. So uh, you can add multiple URLs in here and just save and it will go and uh, get all the content from those URLs and start analyzing it as and when you make the, make the research uh, in the bar as well. So uh, currently there's no way for you to exclude uh, a URL. So let's say you've added it uh, there's no way for you to exclude it. So let's say, for example, uh, this, uh, this device that we're talking about, Bark Control Pro, uh, you wanted to find it not from the Amazon, but you wanted to find it from the dognerds.com. Uh, In that case, you, would, uh, you don't have the ability right now. It would find the first one, analyze that, and give you concepts. Uh, but in the next release, you'll be able 
as, as you click this uh, control, it will exclude that domain from concepts as well. So you have greater control uh, over how you want to facilitate your research and writing process. So uh, in most like 99.9% .9 of the time, you don't have to worry about this. Uh, it's only when concepts are really, really, really not relevant. Uh, even if they're closely relevant, when you expand them into sentences, it will try and make them relevant to the context of your H3, H2, and H1. So uh, you don't have to worry too much uh, around that. But in cases, there is no research uh, out there around something that you're looking for, uh, and it gives you message for that, then you can come uh, grab you know, a URL for custom add it in here or get the custom uh, content and add directly into the concept builder. Okay, so uh, that's one way of doing. Uh, okay, so there's like a few other templates, right? So you can uh, collect steps out of uh, something, benefits, disadvantages. What I wanted to really show you is it can actually read, uh, uh, it, it can read this content and come up with, uh, you know, pre precise steps for features as well. Like, all right, where did we go? And you can generate concepts. You can copy this particular device name in here. And it can actually talk about everything in regards uh, to this in terms of that. So let's say I will just, uh, no effect on all dog sizes, right? So look at that. It figured out that we are talking about the, uh, the Barks Buddy. Uh, and build, it, uh, build out a small paragraph uh, that is uh, talking about this particular uh, a concept in hand. So uh, like it's really powerful and what you can do uh, with this. Uh, you can then use write for me to add more stuff to it. Uh, there is also other write for me over here, which allows you to add uh, write like, uh, you know, for conclusions and stuff like this. Like there are some significant changes to the AI writing abilities uh, in the next release. Uh, you, you'll have a uh, tone of voice, uh, you'll have floating controls. Uh, the models uh, have uh, tremendously improved uh, because of the training data that we've provided. So there's many changes uh, around that as well. Okay, so I really quickly covered the writing aspect of it. I want to cover the SEO aspect of it. So once you have the content written, right, you need to make sure that your score uh, is great, right? So what is a good score? A good score, we say it's 85 plus. Uh, that gives you a really a fighting chance uh, of outranking your competition and taking that third place. So what you can do is go to instructions, check every tab and make sure that there's a tick box here. So if there's a tick box, that means you are uh, adhering to the guideline. You can move to the next one and see that, okay, I can potentially use one or two other keywords uh, to make uh, my outline even more powerful. Okay, so uh, what do I do? So bar control, uh, dog bar control, uh, ultrasound, uh, okay, how can help. And you will see uh, that it starts, okay, so it gave me a tick box. So it's really not asking me to co cover everything, uh, but I need to cover as much as I can. Uh, and this data is coming directly from your ranking competition. Uh, you can use it for blogging. Absolutely, you can use it for anything. You can use it, uh, so we use it for blogging. E-commerce uh, came along after, right? Uh, so this product is for blogging, it's for e-commerce. Uh, it's for any sort of web content that uh, you need help ranking with or that goes on the web. Okay, uh, all right, uh, so let's move on. Similarly, you can check your meta description does not have uh, some of the keywords uh, that we need to target it. Uh, it's uh, missing out on a few. So you can check that uh, and adjust your description uh, to fit that. Moving next, let's look at the sections, right? So we currently have five sections, but 20 is required to get a tick box here. Uh, it's okay, you don't need to uh, get a tick mark for everything, but make sure your score goes above 85. And it is at least above your competition. So you will start seeing your competition, right? And you see 85 is probably the highest over here. So I will try and outrank uh, this particular page uh, with a higher score. So that's, that's what I would target at, uh, making content better and more uh, SEO optimized afterwards. Okay. So let's go ahead uh, and uh, keep going. And you can see, you can also, uh, these are the keywords that you need to target in your H2s and H3 tags or bold tags. 
and as you use them, this will get tick marked. Uh, you can also hover on them and you can see the volume that they have in uh, uh, in SERP, uh, or I mean in search, I mean uh, in uh, Google and uh, based, uh, you know, based your decisions from that. But like I said, right, like PetSafe was used 18 times. You can see people are searching for it. Uh, and as you start using the platform, you'll just start getting a gist of uh, how things are mapped out. But this is super important data. And this is what people are looking for in Google or exact search terms. And this is what your competition is also using. And that is why you need to use them. Okay. Uh, you can also sometimes see like so there is a, uh, sometimes there's no good information on related keywords like your blog topic or uh, or the topic that you're writing on is very specific uh, and it, it's very nuanced and it, you know there's no related uh, search terms for it. In that case is you can rely on some highest frequency keyword data that can help you understand uh, things that people are looking for. Okay, uh, add questions. Similarly, you can uh, look at all these questions that people are asking for in Google and you can start using them as and when you use them, they'll start turning green. Okay, and the last step is URL optimization. Uh, okay, before we start taking questions, uh, I do want to go through SERP analysis really quickly uh, and then we can uh, get to the questions. Okay, uh, so SERP analysis, like what is the base of all this information that we are collecting? Uh, it's based on data, right? So it's based on information that we collect from SERP and we do extensive research on finding out what really works for the competing domains and what will work for you. Uh, and we collect that data to the very nitty gritty of how things are mapped out everywhere in SERP, uh, even this information related keywords data and it is mapped out to uh, H1, H2, H3. And you can see where more people have used stuff and how less they have used stuff. There's significant changes to this uh, feature in uh, editor as well as analysis in the next release as well. So really quick rundown of the platform uh, and uh, happy to answer any questions you guys have. Hey, let's go and see. Can you use for blogging? Yes, absolutely. Michelle Thomas, you can use this for blogging, podcasting, product descriptions, uh, long form content, uh, web pages as well. Uh, product description. Well, product descriptions, like if you are looking for those repetitive, like similar uh, pattern uh, product description uh, that people have templates for, not specifically that, uh, but there is something in the next release uh, that is a community contributed. And uh, you will see people coming up with some really cool uh, uh, methods uh, to help you write the product descriptions, uh, press release. I mean, you can talk about anything. Uh, the, the, the use cases will be endless. Uh, and they, you can yourself also build out very small methods to allow you to do some of these things, uh, which goes on the web. Okay, how to pull images and add them along the content uh, buildup. Uh, can we simultaneously do uh, publication via WordPress integration? Uh, yes, so we do have a WordPress integration uh, and uh, currently you can export and import content directly from the editor into your WordPress editor or vice versa. Uh, and uh, yeah, so you can uh, import images too, but I, uh, my recommendation is that image comes the very last uh, and even if you copy from one place to the other, there's often times uh, you having to upload those images on WordPress required uh, if uh, you are optimizing for images as well, right? Like, so uh, I've, what I've noticed is that people write in Google Doc and then they just copy and paste it thinking that, oh, it's all good, but it's not. It copies uh, the URL where the image is laying on Google, not your domain. So it doesn't really help you, right? So. You're gonna to have to do a little bit of adjusting onto your site when you are placing the images, no matter what tool you use. Okay, new version when, sorry. Um, excuse me, hi, sorry. I just, uh, you were just answering my question about the images, but then how do we source them from the uh, content creator itself? Like we saw a lot of suggestions for the uh, word related content. What about the images? Where do we see suggestions for them? Uh, like what sort of uh, alt tags and stuff that you need to use? 
Uh, yeah, so for example, if I'm covering this, for example, dog collar, uh, this particular topic, ultrasonic bark control, and now alongside, I would like to add some images, which could be, you know, certain pets wearing this uh, particular device. Then how do we go about directly finding it from the Google? Okay, so uh, I would source the images like stock photos and stuff like that. Uh, there is yeah. some cool stuff that you can, uh, that we think we're planning on doing, and it's on the roadmap as well, uh, using GPT-3 to help you come up with the uh, images uh, and uh, add them into the editor, how cool that would be. Uh, but uh, yeah, so we'll get there. Uh, but currently the only way is to, you know, source it from uh, outside sources. We can help you identify uh, the keywords that you need to use when you are saving those uh, image files. So it can help you in ranking uh, higher and like getting you noticed in image searches as well, uh, where like you can come here, let's uh, go to other tags. And uh, let's go ahead and look at images, right? So these are some image, uh, all tags that people have used uh, and you can see uh, this is where it's been used. So you can uh, use some of these words uh, when you are saving your images uh, or the alt tags uh, in your uh, HTML uh, that can help you get ranked for some of these images. But yeah, to your question, uh, image search is not yet on the platform. Uh, that is something that we have considered extensively and uh, we wanna build out an entire feature which allows you to do the alt tag integration within the content uh, that you build out and push it down to the WordPress. So even the image optimization uh, behind the scenes can happen on our tracking, but uh, we'll get there. Thank you. Uh, if you're already on it, maybe also add YouTube to that search content uh, through YouTube. Save uh, content to YouTube? Search content through YouTube because a lot of times we are taking other, other contents and transcribing it and then building up. Oh, on that why content. are you doing that? You will not have to do that uh, in the next release. So uh, I, I will uh, share all the details on the next release. Uh, next Thursday, <laughs> we're doing the Wednesday. So you will be able to just copy uh, the transcripts from uh, YouTube, any video, dump it in here, come up with sections for it, and even write for those sections using the same content. Uh, and uh, concepts will do majority uh, lifting for you. So uh, some really cool stuff coming in in the next release. So uh, hang in there. Great, looking forward really cool. to it. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, it's uh, creating... Uh, creating content from podcast uh, videos uh, will literally be half an hour to 45 minute, well-researched, uh, well-outlined, SEO-optimized content in no time. Great, okay, so let's uh, go ahead and go to the next question. All right, can I just ask um, how I upload my article from outranking directly to WordPress? You said you could do it, but how, how yeah. do you do okay. it? Okay, so let's go ahead and look at it. WordPress, tranking. Uh, so let's go ahead and go to this uh, plugin option. So you, you can go to your WordPress and you can download this uh, plugin. Once you yeah. download the plugin, uh, it will ask you for an API key. Uh, you, need to do, you need to go here uh, to settings. Right. API settings and just copy this key and paste it in there and it will connect your account uh, to your WordPress. Okay, thank you. I, I found the API setting, but I hadn't realized I needed a plugin first. You got it. Uh, there's a small setting icon that you can click and uh, it, it will give you a pop-up where you can insert this uh, in it. Great, thank you. You are welcome. Okay, so let's go. So uh, Brad, uh, we uh, probably, uh, and I say probably, uh, or at least we don't have in the roadmap, not going to do Google ads, Facebook ads, Twitter ads, uh, ads, uh, right? Like that's one example. For that, you, uh, if you are doing that kind of work, you will need some other tools so it can complement. Uh, but outranking, I would say comfortably replace any AI writing for web as well as SEO altogether. Uh, be careful with images. Uh, you must rename uh, them, same as the article name and best to customize the image in some way correct. Uh, yeah, so that's why we give out suggestions. Like when I went to SERP analysis and I uh, 
gave you the basis of how we collect research. We want to make sure that you're not grabbing the same content, right? Uh, you're grabbing, grabbing the key elements of it. So if you see, let's go ahead and down. Okay. So, okay. So you see this image, these are the exact tags. Now let's go ahead and uh, keep going down. Where are the, there's supposed to be highest frequency keyword information uh, somewhere in here. Okay. So it's uh, in the, in your download files, uh, but you, it, here, like, Okay, so you see some of this data right here. So what we, when we suggest something that you use in your content is based on the highest frequency word data and not your image uh, word data itself. So we analyze all of these and we extract the key phrases from it that have been used in multiple places uh, that help uh, those pages rank better. And that's what we suggest to you. So you can customize that and use it as your own, but it's not, uh, the exact sentence or exact, you know, the phrase that you'd find on SERP. Okay. Yes, Kevin, hang in there. Uh, next week. Does this plugin uh, work with Elementor? Uh, we have not tried this yet. Uh, so our WordPress plugin is still uh, the very first version that we have released. Uh, so look out for the newer releases on that as well, uh, coming up uh, later next month, uh, that as well as Google Docs. So Google Docs uh, should be live anytime, like we've submitted for submissions, so Google Doc will also be live. But uh, yeah, so uh, we need to expand upon our uh, plugins and uh, we're working on it, uh, but those releases are separate from the platform and they will come uh, later next month. Does this work for HubSpot as well? Not currently, we do not have integrations with HubSpot. We've considered this and there's enough people upvoting uh, this particular feature on our roadmap. Uh, we definitely can build something out very quickly. Uh, can you show an example of optimizing existing content so you can see what that looks like in the platform? Absolutely. Let's go ahead and go here. I will just add this because we were already doing this. Now let's me go ahead and go to the research. I'm just gonna take some random uh, examples. So like, let's say this pet smart, not pet smart, chewy, right? Like 44 psychology today. Let's see, this has 44 score. Come here, import the data. It will override the data that you currently have. Uh, okay, so let's just fix, fix, fix. I see that it did not uh, pull in uh, the H1 tag uh, from this particular URL. So I see, find the therapist. That's their, no, this is, this is the H1 tag, all right? Let me just go ahead and paste that in here and let's start scoring the content. Okay, so the content, like, I, I still feel like some content did not uh, come here properly. Uh, yeah, I see. Okay, all right, so you can see that there is, the score is 36 currently on the editor. Now, how do we go about improving it, right? So you go to instructions and all I see is one tick box. So let's go here. They're not using control and bark. So the first thing I would do is edit my title in here and uh, add control and bark to it. So I'm just gonna add control and bark at the very end, not care about the construction of the sentence right now, just to show you control bark. And uh, you can, uh, it will, it will auto refresh uh, every few seconds, but title is one of the most important tags in your content. And uh, you need to really pay attention to that. Uh, similarly, you can keep going, keep going. And if you need, if you need to see existing data uh, from the current web, you can always click here and check all the data from sir. So uh, the, the research, the ideation, all of that can happen uh, in the same right panel. Uh, and similarly, you can see meta description, headings, all sections, all questions, uh, and even topic coverage. So topic coverage covers, let's say two words. Uh, it covers all the important things that you need to cover in your content. So this is something that most of you are very uh, familiar with. Uh, if you've been using some other tools which suggest to you to create content around uh, number of times the uh, keyword should be used or uh, these are the only uh, topics that you need to cover in your content. Uh, it's a very wrong way of going about creating content leads to keyword stuffing. We never recommend 
uh, users on how many times a particular word should be used in a particular content. So imagine your, your topic could be 1200 words while that data that's suggesting that you need to use it 10 times uh, could be 500 words, could be a thousand words. The density differs very differently. And when you put all of that together, it just absolutely makes no sense to go after how many times a word you should use in particular content. It is a very, very, very old way of building SEO content. Uh, we are in the new era and what really matters now is content depth. Great, yeah. Uh, no, you do not, uh, uh, Diana. Uh, you do not need to take an SEO uh, course. <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh, that's, that is, uh, so th this is why we are building out AI wizard and things that can get you to that final steps without having too much worry about SEO, uh, SEO at all, right? Uh, and uh, most people, uh, like you need to figure out, right? Like where do I use, how do I use, and what do I use? You don't have to do that figuring out here. You can follow instructions as is, or in the next release, uh, the AI wizard is just going uh, insanely nuts. Uh, but you can use that AI wizard to, you know, like speed pass through everything that you do for outline and come up with uh, a precise outline that you can just start creating concepts around and going from start to end uh, without having too much uh, worry about SEO. Most likely all the factors will automatically fulfill uh, because that's part of the platform. Everything that we do, we influence it in a way that can help you rank. So when you are done with the content, it's most likely going to be already to a certain point very well optimized. Uh, but in cases it, uh, it uh, falls short, you can use instructions and all the data that we have to optimize it. And come to a few webinars, advanced ones, and uh, uh, you know this beginner ones. Uh, trust me, uh, it will take you no more than two to three uh, attempts uh, to learn everything about the platform and really kill it at uh, creating content. Yes, uh, Mark, they are all stored on YouTube channel uh, and uh, they're published uh, about a day or sometimes like the same day, but a day um, the next day on YouTube. So this should be available either later today or tomorrow on YouTube. Uh, and uh, it has the date and everything associated with it, so you'll be able to find it. You're very welcome. All right, uh, any more? Uh, so a quick rundown, like people ask me, like what are uh, the features? Uh, I'll, I'll start naming a few uh, very quickly, but uh, AI Wizard is going insanely uh, big. Uh, we really wanted to create a journey that can help you from A to at least concepts in less than 10 to 15 minutes. And that is what we focus on getting you there with quality data, quality structure, uh, and really good outline structure that can help you really beat out uh, competition and come up with content that your users will find useful. Uh, second, uh, we have tons of, we've added tons of optimization capabilities. So you can read through some data very quickly and understand where you need optimization, how you need optimization, uh, or even help you research uh, different parts of your, uh, different uh, components of the content from your competition very easily uh, using topic coverage and related keywords data. Uh, topic coverage, uh, we've created heat maps around it, uh, as well as related keyword uh, data, we've created heat, ma heat maps around that as well uh, to easily identify things. Uh, AI writing is gonna get a thousand times better, uh, not, only, not only a significant improvement in quality, uh, but very smart logics to understand uh, when you are starting off with an H3, H2, uh, or conclusion or paragraph, uh, it will let you even do tones, uh, uh, different tones, and you control the tones, they're not predefined. So you could say, you know, a Terminator, and I showed an example yesterday, right? Uh, content marketing strategy is in tone of a Terminator. It can do that as well. Uh, there is also a feature uh, called uh, methods uh, that will allow you to build out custom methods for creating uh, I, I, conclusions, uh, introductions, parts of introductions, uh, parts of conclusions, uh, and a number of other things uh, that uh, creative geniuses will figure out how to use it. Uh, you can do it and community will do it as well. Uh, so these are just some like really quick rundowns. Uh, the release is happening uh, next uh, Thursday at 12 a.m. 
Sound good, guys. Uh, so any more questions, uh, feel free to drop it in here. We still have a few more minutes. Uh, what do uh, percentage represent on density? Sorry, I missed that. Uh, the percentage on density. Let's go topic coverage. So people still joining in uh, 50 minutes into the webinar. So welcome. Uh, okay. Uh, so topic coverage, the density, what really means is that um, what is the percentage of this keyword usage in your existing content versus SERP content? So these are the topics. This is getting a, a significant refresh, but uh, what you see over here is bark control has not been used in your content. So it's 0%. This has been used one, uh, one time. So based on your content length and uh, this particular keyword usage, what is the density? Uh, and if it is anywhere between, it's below three, it's considered normal. Uh, if it is three to five, it can still be okay. Uh, as it starts approaching five uh, to 7%, you, uh, someone might say that you are doing some sort of keyword stuffing. Uh, and that is when I would actually look up, so like look up that keyword and, and see if like, you, are you really doing keyword stuffing or not, right? So for example, let's say you have an e-commerce store or uh, you have a blog post and every question starts with, uh, the same uh, related uh, keyword or different variations of it again and again and again, you will see, you will start seeing some repetitions, right? And your density will increase. So the readability decreases. So that's what it's suggesting you uh, that don't go uh, overboard with it. So that, that that's what's topic coverage is. And these topics are curated from CERT data. So uh, they matter in terms of the depth or information that a user might uh, look for. This data is also getting refreshed in the next uh, release, but there's also current density. Uh, and what current density is that sometimes you could be talking about your brand or uh, certain uh, topics which nobody in the SERP is talking about uh, for ranking for this particular keyword. In those cases, you, uh, you will be able to identify those words as well that have uh, uh, higher uh, density and might need some corrections. Okay. Sounds good. All righty. Uh, so uh, I think those were all the questions that everyone had. Uh, do join uh, the next uh, webinar that we have on Thursday uh, where we do some advanced topics uh, and we'll really deep dive into concepts and really start building out some paragraphs and go through some challenges that you can face, how you can overcome them, how you can understand uh, to deal with uh, some nuanced, con uh, nu nuanced content uh, that is not on SERP that you don't know much about, but you still want to write about it. So we'll, we, we'll, we'll go through uh, some of those advanced topics in the next release, uh, or not next release, but on Thursday. And uh, do not forget to join uh, the webinar uh, next week on Thursday, where we will do a, a, a quick walkthrough of the release. So release will happen before that. You can start playing with it, uh, but I'd suggest you come to that uh, particular webinar and learn everything about the new release. So thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you all for coming here and have a wonderful day or a wonderful night. Bye.